Patriots have won the toss and they've elected to receive. Oh, I'm ready, very excited. The fans were sitting in their seats about 30 minutes before kickoff, waving those towels, and it's just a great atmosphere for a football game. Chris Brown will kick it away. Patrick Pass is deep for the Patriots, along with J.R. Redmond. And the AFC Championship game is underway. Five yards deep in the end zone. Patrick Pass will not run it out. And New England will have the ball first down at their own 25 yard, 20 yard line as you look. Those butterflies early today. The Patriots are going to come out, throw on the football, get rid of it. That's what he said the key is for him. Don't take the sacks and look for the football to go down the field early and often. The Patriots begin with an eye formation behind Brady. Movement up front. Penalty markers fly. This play doesn't count, although Brady completes the pass over the middle. But right away, what happened? Before the ball was snapped, false start. New England, number 72. Five yard penalty still, first down. Well, we saw tight end, and Brady spreads the field on first and 15 from the 15 yard line. Boy, how about this? Championship game, five wide receivers for the first play. Brady pulls it down and goes down. Aaron Smith, number 91, led the charge. The Steelers run the three. There's Tim Lewis, defensive coordinator for the number one ranked defense in the NFL on the year. Brady gives, and straight ahead is Antoine Smith for very little. Well, Tom Brady made a nice decision on his first pass. He looked down the field, five wide receivers. The Patriots picked up the blitz wonderfully but nobody was open, so pull the football down. Don't make the big turnover early, and just wait till you get into the flow of the football game. Sacks are nothing new for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Their 55 quarterback sacks led the NFL, and there's the man who has to figure a way around them, the offensive coordinator of the Patriots, Charlie White. Brady on third and 18. Quick pass to the side, and the screen is complete, and Troy Brown, Troy Brown out across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. He'll still be about three yards shy of a first down. Mike Jones made the stop, and onto the field will come the punting unit. Well, that's a big play, Greg. It gives them better field position. It makes you feel better about your offense, and also now they know what they're dealing with out here in the crowd noise. The crowd noise was the biggest factor against the Patriots' offense that time. Troy Edwards standing back at his own 30 for the Steelers for the kick from Ken Walter. Left Walter floats it high and Edwards drifting back. It bounces at the 25-yard line, takes a Steeler bounce and rolls out of bounds at about the 27. 46-yard kick and no return. And Onto the field comes Cordell Stewart, who has had an absolute superb season as the quarterback of the Steelers. Yeah, what a turnaround for Cordell Stewart. Last year, nobody wanted him here in town. This year, he's played very, very good from the start all the way through the season. Very composed, and the big deal for him, always look for him to run the football early because Bill Cowher says that takes away the nerves. It makes him feel like he's part of the football game. in the backfield for the first time in seven weeks. And the bus gets his first handoff. Squirms forward to about the 29 or 30 yard line. Jeremy Tooman is the tight end. And Jerome Bettis, after one carry, comes to the side. And there are four wide receivers in for the Steelers now on second down. from the shotgun. Stewart throws, and that's incomplete intended for Plexico Burris, trying to hit him on the back shoulder. And it'll be Fan who runs the Patriot defense. This is what the Patriots want, third long, so they can give Cordell Stewart a lot of different looks. And here comes the blitz. 
Stewart has time, throws incomplete at the 40-yard line intended for Hines Ward, who slipped as he tried to make the catch, and so it'll be a three and out for the Steelers. Well, both teams did a very good job of picking up the blitz. New England comes with two extra blitzers. They get them all at the line of scrimmage. Cordell Stewart, plenty of time to throw it. Both of his throws were off lines. That's just nerves starting out in a big game. Troy Brown drifting back to the 20-yard line. Nice move at the 30. And reaches the 45-yard line. Troy Brown, the NFL's leading punt returner with a 25-yard return as we take our first time out. As you look at Tom Brady's incredible second-half numbers from last week's game, Tom Brady was as relaxed a young quarterback as you could possibly imagine when we talked with him yesterday. Fine field position for New England at their own 45. Brady on the move, throws over the middle, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, J.R. Redden. Well, Greg, you were right when you were talking about Tom Brady. I looked at him yesterday when we were talking to him. I said, you know, Tom, you guys cannot run the football against the Steelers' defense. And he, what did he do? He looked at me, gave me a little smile, and he goes, I guess that just means we're going to have to throw it. <laughs> He's excited about it. But what we've seen here early, physically, they, they're picking up the blitz. They're getting in the, the right positions. But they are not keeping the pass rushers out long enough for Tom Brady. On second and 10, Antoine Smith straight ahead for a couple. Pulls his way to about the 48-yard line. You know, as we talked to Tom Brady about that comeback, that was made in the second half in the snowstorm last week. He said when we were trailing by 10 with nine minutes to play, everything that is supposed to kick in at that time of the game kicked in perfectly. Yeah, it did. They had, a, they had to have about 10 different things go right for him, and all 10 went their way. That's why they won the game in overtime. But again, the Steeler defense, you watch it on film. You think you can do certain things against it. Then you line up against them, and you go, oh, man. They're a lot better in person than it looked on film. Third and seven. And a whistle and a flag, and the play will not count, although Brady will unload it anyway. Before the ball was snapped, ball start, New England, number 63. Five yard penalty and it's still third down. That time it was right guard Joe Andrews, and we've seen a couple of signs of a few jitters and tightness oh. already today. Well, there's got to be, first off, especially from New England. Crowd noise is huge because they can't hear the quarterback. But you're playing a defense that's fast, you know it's good, it's good athletically, and they move around a lot. So everything is working against the New England offensive line here in the start of the game. Brady and the Patriots facing a third and 12 and need the Pittsburgh 45 for a first down. And our first Here we go, say our first gathering. conference of the day. There That's you right. go. Well, they want to know, hey, how was last night? Was it a good night? Did you have good food? See, they're nervous too. Big game. Championship. Well, they've got to talk now. Please reset the clock to 11.44. 11.44 on the clock. So we'll add four more seconds to the game clock. Make up. Third and 12. New England winners of seven straight, nine of their last ten games. J.R. Redmond is the lone back alongside Brady. No blitz this time. The pass over the middle is complete. Redmond spinning at midfield and goes down and is a good five yards shy of first down yardage. Well, the Steelers, they know it's third long, so they're going to play safe defense. They're going to make Tom Brady throw the football short. And when you do that against the Steeler defense, they're very good. Running to the football and excellent tackles. Troy Edwards standing back at his own 20-yard line, awaiting the kick from Ken Walter. Bouncing inside the 15 and grabbed at the 12-yard line and going down. 
at the hands of Gerard Cherry. So, excellent defensive positioning for the Patriots. 10.35 to play in the first quarter. Neither team has been able to get anything going offensively as Cordell Stewart brings the Steelers to the line. Bettis and Whitman in the backfield. And a pitch for Bettis, and Bettis wrapped up inside the 10-yard line. Willie McGinnis was first to him, and let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie. Well, Greg, Jerome Bettis says that botched painkiller injection was almost a blessing in disguise this week. His running, his cutting, his burst much better than last week. But one thing he did, he went back and looked at all 225 of his runs this year. He said, I looked at my footwork. I looked at the way I ran. I just kind of wanted to relive all those moments to try to ward off some of that dreaded rust. All right, Bonnie, he has two carries for zero yardage. He lost two on that play. It's a second and 12. Stewart to throw. Far side, incomplete penalty marker slide. Otis Smith with the coverage on Plexico Burris. Now, in talking with the New England cornerbacks yesterday, they both said they're going to play tough and up close. You think so? We talked to Otis Smith and Ty Law yesterday together, and Greg... You were sitting about three feet away from him. Pass interference, New England, number 45. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul, first down. Well, let's watch the replay real quick. Twice Cordell Stewart's had this throw. That time, Otis Smith contact as Plexico Burris goes up to try to catch it. But Greg, they were so fired up, so upset, and so determined to do a good job today. They made, they made you move back about three feet. They were ready to hit you. Stewart, the screen on first down. Bettis, Bettis on the move. And Bettis out across the 35-yard line. 12 yards and another first down. Well, when you're too aggressive going to the quarterback, what happens to you is this. Cordell Stewart going back, it's a screen. The pass rushers in a hurry to get there. Roman Pfeiffer, a linebacker on the blitz. That leaves nobody out there to tackle Jerome Bettis. And what did Jerome Bettis tell us? He says, early in the game, I'm just going to have to look somebody up and get some contact. We've got a good lick right there. First down at Pittsburgh at their own 37. Bettis will try the right side this time as penalty markers fly. And Bettis is down at about the line of scrimmage. Teddy Bruschi the first to reach him. No gain on the play, and let's check the flag. I think the umpire threw the flag, Greg. Usually, this is a very unusual call. He was at Hockey League. Illegal hands to the face, New England, number 91. It's a five-yard penalty and an automatic first down. That's defensive end Bobby Hamilton. Yeah, Bobby Hamilton probably just trying to get good explosion against an offensive lineman, lets the hands go to the face, and that's pretty easy to spot when you do that. Second New England penalty on this drive. Bettis with a breather on the side. Well, when you've been out seven weeks, I don't, do not expect Jerome Bettis to carry the football 25 to 30 times a day. Stewart, quick drop, quick pass, incomplete. Intended for tight end Jeremy Tooman and middle linebacker Teddy Bruschi was there. Well, what they had this time, New England being aggressive early in the game, especially on defense. Teddy Bruschi on the coverage, but one of the corners, Otis Smith, was on a blitz. Nice coverage by Bruschi against Tooman. Teddy Bruschi has had a terrific season for Bill Belichick. A couple of sacks, a couple of interceptions. Greg, that time Ty Law was on a blitz. Stewart lost the football. The pile up at the 39-yard line. And it appears that the Steelers recover. Well, when this happens, I can just hear all the coaches up in the booth going, my gosh, ever since training camp, we've been working, you know, that's, but those things, these mistakes can happen, especially there's Mike Malarkey, offensive coordinator for the Steelers. 
you're nervous, you're trying to identify a defense, you got to play on where you got to really take a chance to block somebody from the center position, makes a bad snap. Third and 13 now for Stewart, who operates out of the shotgun, and here comes the blitz. Gets it away, passes incomplete through the hands of Chris Fuamatu Makafala. Well, the, the New England defense, I said it, what they want to do, and they're doing it too, Greg. They are showing everything. It's third and long, no safe defense here. Look at the linebackers, one from that side, two, six people coming. Pretty good pickup, but look at the hit. Roman Pfeiffer gets a nice lick on Cordell Stewart. The kick toward the sideline, and Troy Brown grabs it and runs out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Nice kick by Josh Miller of the Steelers, 46 yards. And is done on his first two possessions. J.R. Redmond in the backfield, and Brady to throw on first down once again. Waits, waits, and then throws it away. His intended receiver, David Patton, to the near side. And on offense, they are not hesitating once they grab the football, are they? No, they're not, Greg. You know, the one thing, though, remember what Bill Belichick said. We know we can figure out the blitzes. We can get people in position to block them. But they're worried about what's going physically as they go to the hurry-up offense because you cannot duplicate the skill and the speed of the Steelers' defensive players in practice. Going with the no huddle and... Brady throws over the middle and complete across the 25 and out to the 30 is Troy Brown. And that's where and there's a late go. penalty marker flying in from deep in the secondary. Sorry, Greg. See, that's where they want to throw the football to Troy Brown. And I'll show you why here in one second. Conference number two of the day on the yeah, far side well, of the field. Uh, Greg, why they want to throw it to Troy Brown, they're going to play him inside. That puts a safety on him. Lee Flowers, Troy Brown, tremendous season. There was no face mask foul on the and was on the helmet but did not pull the mask. The play results in a first down. All right, good explanation. Let's look at the catch. Troy Brown, here he is against Lee Flowers. Nice little move to the outside, just enough. Creates space, catches it, and then protect the football against the swarming defense. First, first down of the day, and there you see what was the possible penalty and was decided it wasn't. Quick pass, and that's complete to Troy Brown to about the 35-yard line. Yeah, good shot by that, Greg. Just, just a hand on the helmet and a good conference by the officials to get the call right. And once again, the Patriots go without a huddle. Remember, neither team has crossed midfield so far today. You know, I was close. I said the Patriots going to come out during the week and be conservative, and, yeah. and here they come, just letting it go. Another blitz. This time, Brady pulls it down and then falls at the 36-yard line, so he picked up a yard on the play. John Fiala with the stop, and now the Patriots are looking at a third and four. I think when we met with the coaches yesterday, and Bill Belichick was telling us what they're going to do, I was like, oh, my, you're kidding me. But that's what happens when you get in big games. Don't be afraid to try to win the game. Don't be concerned, oh, if we make a mistake, make the plays. Here comes another blitz pass over the middle and fighting for first down yard is Jermaine Wiggins, and he didn't get there. The spot is going to come up about a half yard short of a first down. Well, another blitz, and the Patriots again just get somebody on every blitzer. This time, John Fiala comes in. Look at J.R. Redmond come across the formation, make, make a nice block against Kendrell Bell. But again, good tackling down the field. Yeah, we're going to have a measurement here, and as we talk to Bill Belichick, you know, we're saying, well, what are you going to do about all those blitzers? And basically, Coach was saying, well, I'm not going to let them come unimpeded, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was a little insulted that we said that to him, and it's about a foot short, and I think they'll punt the football here. And I'm probably thinking wrong. As you say that, number 44, Mark Edwards, comes onto the field on fourth and one, and Tom Brady's still out there. The Patriots are going to go for it. Uh, and let me go on record quick here. I really disagree with this. Field position is too important. You've had a really good start to the game if you're the Patriots. You, you withstood Pittsburgh's initial onslaught on defense and offense. You see New England's numbers on fourth down. Antoine Smith, Mark Edwards in the backfield. And now 
Brady calls timeout. Well, that's, that makes sense. Hoping to pull the defense offside. It didn't happen. Running out of time. The punting unit will be on the field when we come back. There, rather than taking the five-yard penalty? Yeah, it is, Craig. You play field position to the max in the first half. You waste the timeouts in the first half. You save them in the second. Troy, Ed Troy Edwards is deep. What a kick. What a kick by Ken Walter. And this one will bounce at the five and take a sidewards bounce and is down just inside the 10-yard line. 52-yard punt by Ken Walter. But did we ask you to check your local listings? Let me rephrase that. You use your timeouts freely in the first half. You can serve them in the second half because you need them in case you're trying to win the game late. You waste them in extreme <laughs> circumstances. Yeah, waste is not a good word when you're talking about this game. Well, Pittsburgh has had the worst of the field position battle so far. Bettison Whitman in the backfield now as Cordell Stewart operates from his own nine-yard line. The pitch for Bettis, trying to turn the corner. Doesn't get there. Ted Johnson led the charge, and he's dropped back at his own six-yard line. A loss of three. Greg, there is no doubt Jerome Bettis is not as fast and as powerful as we've seen him in the past. This time, trying to decide where to go. Well, maybe he's just not as quick and powerful because there are no holes to run in yet so far. You know, we talked with we talked with Jerome on Friday, and he was adamant as he comes to the sideline, adamant about saying he wasn't going to be missing anything. Yeah, you know what? Again, just like the Patriots offense getting ready for Pittsburgh's defense, practice speed and game speed, no matter how hard you try, they're different. Amos Zeraway is onto the field now on second and 13. Stewart fakes the pass, almost gets wrapped up in his own end zone and makes it out to about the two or three yard line. A loss of four on the play, and it's third and 17. And so far, the only pass that Cordell Stewart has completed was a five-yard screen pass to Bettis. Well, this is the fake screen left. Sweep right with the quarterback, but the problem was it was against the blitz, and Bobby Hamilton, number 91, had him in the end zone. Cordell Stewart, Greg, you said it. He's big, he's strong, hard to bring down sometimes just one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, how many times did we hear the Patriots say yesterday, he's more than a quarterback, he's another running back in the game. Well, you said while watching him warm up, he's 20 pounds from a linebacker. But he has very strong legs, helped him get out of trouble. Out of his own end zone, pass this side to a wide open zero way. Zero way to the 10, to the 11. And that'll be well short of a first down, Mike Grabel made the stop after a nine-yard pickup and the Steelers forced to kick. Well, patience. I, I tell you, the one thing I like, both teams on offense showing some patience, not gambling. To the other side, there's good defenses when you get to the championship game. And the, and the Patriots, Greg, are doing everything defensively, making it difficult for the Steelers' offense. Outside of that near heart attack that you had on fourth and one, everything's been pretty steady. Josh Miller's line drive kick in that one takes a Steeler bounce and what a punt that one all the way down and inside the 25 yard line good for a 64 yard kick but there's a penalty marker down uh, Troy Brown should have caught the football and stepped out of bounds instead he lets it go hits in and rolls another 15 to 20 yards and it's against New England There we go. Nope, it's against Pittsburgh. Bill Cower saying, Ed, talk to me. Well, Bill, no, Bill Cower knows what a wonderful change of field position he got out of that. And now, I don't think you have to ask the Patriots. They're going to want you to re-kick it. Oh, they're not likely to get another kick of that nature. Pittsburgh, number 81, went out of bounds without being pushed out of bounds, which is a five-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. Yes, it is. Troy Edwards, number 81, on the outside. He runs outside, out of bounds, not pushed by Terrell Buckley, and he didn't get back in quick enough either probably, but you're allowed to go out of bounds. If you get pushed, just make sure you get, get back in as fast as possible. Boy, big break for the New England Patriots here. So now Josh Miller will have to kick it again. He's back at the end of the end zone. Wow, that's the first time I've heard the crowd quiet today. Boy, 
it. What a change <laughs> thinking. What a change of scenery for these New England Patriots from last Saturday night in Foxborough. Oh, but we've experienced the same change. It is incredible. Now the other thing too, as we got ready for this game today, the Steelers very concerned about the punt returns by the New England Patriots, and the Patriots think they have a decided advantage in special teams, especially with their punt return team. See how Miller does with this one. Down the middle. Troy Brown from the 45. To the 40. To the 30. Brown to the 15. To the 5. Touchdown! Bill Cowher, they've been kicking to the sidelines. The kick before was to the sidelines. They kick it right down the middle. They give all the options to Troy Brown and to the New England Patriots, and they take advantage of it. Right down the middle, watch Troy Brown. Little hesitation, and then right up the middle, and such a big hole. Nice job of just staying out of the way of the tackles. Good blocking downfield. Boy, Terrell Buckley, terrific job of blocking, and that's what they wanted, a special teams scoring opportunity they got it the second punt return touchdown allowed by the Steelers in two weeks Jermaine Lewis did it for the Ravens last week Vinatieri for the extra point and it's good Bill Cower could not have been off of him now now you can play you got a little freedom you you can afford a mistake if it happens and it just makes players and coaches be a little more creative and loose this is Troy Edwards at the 10. The 20. And down at about the 23 or 24 yard line by Fred Coleman. Let's now, go back to the touchdown. Yeah, let's look at it. I want to show you some good blocks. Watch Troy Brown in the middle of the field. I'm, I want to say, look at the blocks. There's no blocks. It's just Troy Brown making a nice run up the middle. Pittsburgh just out of position in the punt game, but watch Troy Edwards. Troy Edwards is the one who ran out of bounds, committed the penalty. He never got off the line of scrimmage wow. on the re-kick. What a job by the Patriots. That time it was Terrell Buckley was doing it, and so was Antoine Harris. First down, Pittsburgh from their own 24. Stewart throws out in the flat, and that is complete to Kreider, the fullback. Think of New England Patriots, when you say they lead here, consider that that entire game against the Raiders, they never led until it was over. Well, you know, you look at this game today, Greg, we, we've talked about the New England defense, some of the things they want to try to do, but this Pittsburgh offense, they were really counting on one fact, the fact that their, their offensive line can overpower New England's defensive line, and they could run the football, and when you do that, everything opens up for the Steelers' offense. Stewart, under pressure, gets away, right up the middle, to the 40, 45, midfield, and one man to beat. Can't beat Otis Smith, he's run out of bounds. 34 yards for Cordell Stewart and a big first down. Well, that's what the, the defense of New England, they got the perfect play on again to stop him. And Cordell Stewart, he avoided a safety. Look at the blitz, here it comes. Nowhere to go, breaks the tackle. Just gets away from another one and in. Laurie Malloy, no chance in the middle of the field. Cordell Stewart can run just like a running back in situations like that. Nice blocking down the field by Jermaine Tooman. All of a sudden, the Steelers in New England territory. Pass to the far side, and that one is complete. And Hines Ward inside the 35-yard line and appears to be a little hitting on the far side of the field, doesn't Ooh, it? a little. Everybody's running, trying to get some licks in. Jerome Bettis in the backfield actually became almost a lead blocker after the ball was caught. He ran down there so fast. Hines Ward with his first catch of the day, a four-yard gain. The line of scrimmage is the 34, and it's second and six. Well, the one day way you stop a running quarterback is you blitz him. In other words, you just cover the whole front of him where when he wants to run, there's nowhere to go. The Patriots just a little out of position. Cordell Stewart took advantage of it. The kid is to Bettis. You know, we've heard so much about this confrontation. Ty Law, and we asked Ty Law about 
about his alleged comments, and he said, you know, nothing could be further from the truth. It was a fabrication by some writer. He said, they're very much like we are. They like to hit people in the mouth. We like to hit people in the mouth. And he said, it came out that I said, we're going to go up there and hit him in the mouth. Yeah, yeah he was, um, besides feeling like they're getting no chance to win the game, he was pretty upset over those comments that were printed in. He let us know that yesterday when we talked to him. Another blitz. From shotgun on 35. The pass is complete inside the 30, inside the 25 to Bobby Shaw. And a first down for the Steelers. Well, we showed you on the other side, Troy Brown going against the safety. And Lee Flowers. This time you got Bobby Shaw, wide receiver, going against Tabucky Jones, who is a safety. He faked inside when he broke outside. Look how wide open he is. And again, the Steelers' offensive line and the running backs doing a good job of picking up the blitzers. Coming down to the final moments of the first quarter here, Bettis and Kreider in the backfield. And the fake, the pass out to the side. That's complete to the tight end, pushing and pushing inside the 15 yard line and very close to another first down. Mike Grable with the stop. So as time winds down in the first quarter, the Steelers trail by seven, but they're on them. Well, look at Pittsburgh's red zone off all the first three possessions, 29 yards, 60-some yards in this possession. Cordell Stewart has completed five straight passes, and he's thrown in a 34-yard run for good measure. First down from the 13. That pulls across the 10 to the nine-yard line. Pick now, up a four, and it's second and six. Yeah, when you look at Pittsburgh's offense, they're not that good in the red zone. They kick a lot of field goals. 29th in the National Football League. The Patriots, very good, but it really doesn't make sense to me. I understand Pittsburgh's ahead. Sometimes they go for the field goals, but when you got a mobile quarterback, good wide receivers, a creative game plan, and good running backs, you should be one of the best inside the 20-yard line uh, scoring touchdowns. On the other side of the ball, the New England Patriots have been outstanding in the red zone defensively as Stewart dancing around and goes down at the 11-yard line. We specifically talked with Bill Belichick about his red zone defense. Oh, he said, hey, look, he, he looks at me and laughs like I know it inside out because he coached for the Giants for so many years. And Cordell having trouble with the snap so far today, but... Bill Belichick says the key to our defense is we just take away some of the easy plays that the offense wants to do. We make them, we'll give them throws, but it's going to be the throws way outside of the sidelines, and most teams are not willing to try it once they're going in to try to score. Play clock is down to five as Stewart and the Steelers look at third and eight. Pulls it down, and now Stewart is on the move. Penalty marker down, throw into the end zone is incomplete. Let's check the flag. Usually when a quarterback moves like that, yep, it's going to be a hold because the defense, offensive lineman's going, hey, what's going on here? He's wondering why the defensive lineman just takes off and runs away from him. Holding Pittsburgh, number 77. The penalty is declined. Brings up fourth down. So that's Marvell Smith, the second-year tackle, and that'll bring... Chris Brown and the field goal unit on, and to say that things have been adventurous here at Heinz Field for place kicker Chris Brown is an understatement. He's missed 15 or 14 field goals on the season, 10 at home, and one last week in the postseason. And this south end of the field is the trouble spot as far as the wind is concerned. From 30 yards out, he hit that one hard and he hit it straight. Who do you think is happier, Bill Cower or Chris Brown? Seven to three, Patriots lead. We, we had our wishes as well. You know, Chris Brown, that field goal was all the more miraculous because as he was warming up, Jerry Glanville was all over him out on the field. Oh, it was. I, I thought Chris Brown should have just lined up and kicked one at him because he was watching every <laughs> kick, analyzing it, and just seeing you know, he kicked it very well during warm-ups. 13-yard line, this is Patrick Pat to the 30, and over the 30 to about the 33-yard line, and brought down by Lindsey Jackson, and we check in with Armin. 
Greg, it's really no surprise what Troy Brown has done today or set a team record with 101 receptions this year because when you talk to him, the words like persistency, consistency, and hard work come up time and time again. It really dates back to his days as a teenager in South Carolina where he used to haul watermelons, pick them up 10 to 12 hours a day, not only strengthen his worth ethic, but really developed his strength of his hands. Back to you. All right, Armin, yeah, that'll explain those arms of his. The 33-yard line, the line of scrimmage. The give is to Antoine Smith, and Antoine Smith to about the 35, the 36-yard line. It'll be second and seven. You know, Armin talking about Troy Brown. Great, we talked to him last week, and you know, it's always nice to see guys like him come in the league, have no chance, just trying to survive, and then, like five years later, all of a sudden, they're a starting wide receiver, and not only do they start, they're extremely productive, and this year just bears that out, over 100% receptions. Coming this way now, and across the 35 to the 40 is Antoine Smith. You know, Troy Brown, Hasn't had a touchdown catch in six-plus consecutive games, but he's had three punt returns for touchdowns. On the screen there, boy, he has an ability to weave his way through traffic, which serves him well on those punt returns, just like this one. Well, you know you've arrived as a wide receiver when the offense finds ways and design plays just for you, and the Patriots do that for Troy Brown. Brady from the shotgun, quick pass this side, and that is complete and out of bounds to Charles Johnson, number 81. Well, you know, I keep watching this game. Both defenses being creative, blitzing, but both offenses getting in good position to pick it up. Finally, Tom Brady has time to throw the football to the sideline, finds a wide open receiver against Dwayne Washington. Charles Johnson with his first reception since the 25th of November. Charles Johnson, a former first-round draft pick by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Brady, play fakes on first down, steps up and goes deep and has his man wide open and overthrew him. David Patton had beaten his man and just couldn't catch up. Well, Tom Brady probably had to be a little careful because he's getting ready to get smashed by Jason Gilden, so he throws it in a safe spot. And David Patton, one of the fastest wide receivers you'll see. Well, it was a late hit, really, and it was low. Nice move, but he needed to stick the football in there on a line, but didn't just didn't make the right decision on where to throw. Second and ten. Brady looks back this way and completes it to Redmond. Redmond looking for running room and runs out of room. He's down back to the 41-yard line. Kendrell Bell. The NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year heads him for a six-yard loss. Well, Tom Brady limping just a little bit from that hit because you could see his ankle turn on the play before. But the one thing, Greg, last week we saw, I think, at least 10 screen plays by the New England Patriots. That might be all of them we're going to see today. The Patriots knew Pittsburgh was too good on defense, too fast, and they knew they'd be working on them all week, too, so not going to try too many of them. Steeler fans on their feet on third and 16. Brady steps up over the middle, complete inside the 40-yard line to Troy Brown, and that's enough for a first down, and the Steelers are saying incomplete. What a throw by Tom Brady, and terrific protection allows him to get the time to throw the ball down the middle to Troy Brown. Jason Gilden on Troy Brown, not a good matchup. And now here comes the red marker. It means Bill Cower wants to challenge this call. Well, we could not see from that angle. Pittsburgh is challenging the ruling on the field that it was a completed pass. So we go into replay mode for the first time today. Pretty big replay, too. We didn't have any good thing because we didn't have any big ones last week, did no, we? No, we didn't. No such thing as a little one you get in the playoffs. Troy Brown has possession, turns, hand is under the football. It comes out, but it's after he hits the ground. Let's look at it again. This is not going to be a good angle because we lose sight of the football. 
Let's try this one. Check where Troy Brown's hands are when he goes down to the ground. I got to get down here because the sunlight. Hand is underneath the football. Is that how you see it Greg? I'm going to say that that's a catch. And it's going to be a very unpopular decision here in Pittsburgh. Now you know they did kind of change this rule a little bit a couple years ago if you remember when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were playing the St. Louis Rams in a championship game it used to be the ball if you even if you had control it couldn't hit the ground first but that's not the case in this play. Well Ed Hockey Lee is going to take a good long look we're at 10 26 to play in the first half. Yeah it's pretty tight and it's going to be how he interprets the rule. He has to have total control of the football once he hits the ground. Elbows on the ground. Elbow hit the ground. He had control of the football when his elbow hit the ground. Let's look at that one more time. Well, Ed Hockley has made his decision. A body part. See, I didn't recognize it the first time. Watch. He catches it. Total control. Elbow hits the ground. You're down. Complete pass. I haven't got one of these right all year. This one I'm going to get right. Everybody's laughing at me. After reviewing the play, the receiver never had complete control of the ball. The ball hit the ground. Therefore, the pass was incomplete. The ball will go back, and it is third and 15 on the 42-yard line. We'll put eight seconds back on the clock. Please reset the clock. Let's watch it again. Does he have control of it? I thought he did. Well, you got to be on the ground to have control. But, yeah. And so, regardless what it is, Greg, you have to remain in control of the football even after you hit the ground. Well, how unusual for us to be in the middle of a questionable replay call. Well, that's a tough call. Yeah. Now Ed Hockley is going to explain it to Bill Belichick. Meanwhile, that wipes out what would have been a 19-yard gain and a New England first down. So the key there, even though it looked like he had control, even after he hit the ground, he has to keep it in his control at all times. And you know, the Patriots, despite leading this game 7-3, have yet to cross over into Steeler territory on offense today. So number 13 is Ken Walter, and he will get this kick away once the officials have finished discussing matters. Well, Ed Hockley is going to go back. I think they're going to we're just checking to be sure we've got the correct spot. We're not changing the ruling. Let's go see either the time or the yard line. Well, as they take a look at that, you'd have to say that the New England Patriots have to be happy with the way this game has gone so far. Oh, they got to be ecstatic. They were just hoping to hang in there. I think even on offense, Greg, they're starting to find protecting a little better and what they can do throwing the football down the field. Well, the Patriots told us that Tom Brady said we worked on protection a lot this week, and the Steelers have not quite created the havoc in the backfield the way they did a week ago against the Baltimore Ravens. That's Troy Edwards standing at his own 15-yard line. side of his foot and out of bounds and this is going to be the worst punt of the day for Ken Walter. 10-27 to play. Great field position when we come back to Pittsburgh. It was 52 yards. This last one just 18 yards and gives Pittsburgh possession at their own 40-yard line. Jerome Bettis, Dan Kreider in the backfield behind Cordell Stewart. Go long. 
Stewart going deep down this side for Hines. Ward, oh, what a catch. Did he come down inbound? The official says no. Cordell was faking like he was going to go out, and they were going to snap it to the running back. He walked back underneath the center because they run that play a lot. Trying to catch New England off guard, throws it down the field. Well, one official said no, and... Hits the ground, the ball comes loose. After reviewing the play, after the re as the receiver hit the ground, the ball was moving in his hands on his chest. He never got possession of the ball again until after his body had touched the ground out of bounds. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass that brings up second down. You know what? I was New even England afraid to give my trying. opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but Ed Hockley, let me just say this. Terrific job of explaining to the fans and everybody at home exactly what's going on. And, and exactly what he saw in the replay and is basing his decision on. That time you could see as he was going down two that he regripped with his right hand, hit the ground, the football came out. It's funny, we talked about this last night too. So it's second and ten from the 40-yard line. A couple of play fakes and Stewart with a screen. This is Zeroway. Zeroway, 45, 48-yard line. A pickup of eight, and it'll be third and on the next tell halftime report. Third and two for Stewart and the Steelers. This side. And looking for running room and not finding it is Hines Ward. Well, Hines Ward, a player, you want to find ways to get the football to him. But New England, they know all these tricks because they run a lot of these same plays. Troy Edwards in motion, trying to get the block on the outside. Hines Ward, look at Ty Law, good position, breaks down, nowhere to go. I believe just before the snap of the ball, you heard someone yell, shovel pass. Yes. So Troy Brown, back just inside his own 10-yard line for the kick. Near side of the field and out of bounds. I think Bill Cower might have made it a point. Josh Miller, please don't kick it to Troy Brown. The Patriots from their own 22. Looking for running room on the left side is Antoine Smith, and it's just not there. Well, you know, you've noticed a little bit of a change from the New England Patriots. They were going to come out, force it down the field, really be aggressive, but it's just too dangerous, Greg. It's just too much, too volatile, too many things can go wrong, and they've settled down, trying to find some ways to run the football a little, so when they throw the football, maybe Tom Brady can get a little extra time to throw it. Troy Brown in motion, Brady will throw. That's complete. And this is Brown. And Brown across the 40 and out to the 42, 43 yard line. Boy, every time Tom Brady drops back, if you're the Steelers, just send three people to Troy Brown because that's about all he's looking for. They bring him in motion, the only wide receiver out wide open. And watch this little move. Lee Flowers misses the tackle and lets him get a lot of extra yards. How's this for how much Tom Brady has relied on Troy Brown? 101 receptions on the regular season, 59 of them for first down. Brady with all kinds of time throws to the near side. Mark Edwards pulls that one in at a 40, the 49 yard line. Seven yards, second and three. Now, I'm telling you, Tom Brady waited as long as he could because he was trying to get it down the field to Troy Brown, but he very smart. Don't be too greedy. Take the short pass and get your seven or eight yards. Six rushes, 14 passes. Here's Antoine Smith trying the right side. Across midfield, still on his feet and down to the 47 of the Steelers. Brent Alexander tripped him up, and Antoine Smith battling a sore right leg. 
with a pretty good carry. Well, you know, when you're making terrific runs and you're getting three and four yards, you know it's rough out there. Jason Gilden, nice job. Doesn't let him get outside, uses his right shoulder to take on the block, and Antoine Smith breaking the tackles and doing a good job just to pick up the first down. New England offense in Pittsburgh territory for the first time today. Brady to throw. Out in the flat, Edwards. Edwards cuts it back and comes up short of the 40-yard line. As we come up on six and a half minutes to play in the first half. Tom Brady and, and Lawyer Malloy were the two team representatives who came into Pittsburgh early for the press conferences on Friday. And they stayed rather than travel back to New England. <laughs> Tom Brady telling us one reporter said, well, gee, we're going to miss the Saturday morning walkthrough. <laughs> that won't exactly cost you a football game. Straight ahead is Mark Edwards. And Edwards uh, looks to be about a yard to a half yard short of the first down. You know, a lot of times when you watch a football game and running backs have to struggle so much and break tackles and all that stuff just to get just to get a couple yards, it makes me think you're gonna there's gonna be some fumbles because you're fighting so hard to get those extra yards. You get hit too. The more you fight, the more guys get there to hit on you, and that's what causes the fumble. Let's see what New England's offense does here on third and short. Two tight ends on the field. Brady going to keep it. And he appears to have enough for the first down. That might be the best play you can do. I was going to say, boy, handing the football off to a running back in third and short against the Steelers, I don't know if they can get back to the line of scrimmage quick enough. So quick count, catch them off guard, let the quarterback pick up the yard. Now the Patriots really feel like once they get down to this part of the field, that they can score with a big play because the Steelers, when you get on their side of the field, do not blitz as much as they do when they have you backed up. Brady eludes the tackler. No, he goes down at the 47. Jason Gilden kept after him and got it. Hey, look, you don't get to the AFC Championship game and having the number one ranked defense in the, in the National Football League by being overzealous, over pursuing running plays, and Jason Gilden almost fooled because he's such a good athlete, still gets a sack on Tom Brady. On his way to his second straight Pro Bowl, Gilden registered 12 sacks during the regular season, added another against Baltimore last week. Hard to trick this defense and get it out of position. Quick pass out here to Troy Brown. Brown to the 40. Dragged down at about the 41-yard line. Lee Flowers made the stop. 4.15 to play in the first half. Now, you know, Greg, go back to that play before. It just took so long. You know, that might have, that would have been a tremendous play against about 27 or 28 other defenses in this league. But Pittsburgh, again, they're, they're taught so well by Tim Lewis. They're so disciplined. They do not get out of position for the trick plays. Brady needs to reach the 26-yard line for a first down. Pass the other way, knocked down and almost intercepted by Jason Gilder. Last week, twice against the Baltimore Ravens, Pittsburgh linebackers were blocked to the ground, got up and hit the quarterback and caused interceptions. And Jason Gilden, try, they try to knock him to the ground. He doesn't go, gets up, and really should have had the interception. So Ken Walter set to kick it away, and Bobby Shaw is standing at his own 10-yard line. You got to knock these defenders down twice to get a good play. Sky high. Fair catch called for. To let it bounce at the one-yard line, and it goes into the end zone. So the line of scrimmage will be the 20-yard line. 40-yard punt, no return. Jason Gilden with a couple of huge defensive plays. The statue out front of Art Rooney, the longtime and beloved late owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. The son Dan now operating the team and enjoying this trip to the AFC Championship game as much as anyone. 339 to play. 14 passes to nine ground attacks for the Steelers. 
Zero away. Zero away. Wrapped up by Richard Seymour, the rookie. First round pick out of Georgia. Loss of one on the play. Richard Seymour, the Patriots, the first round draft pick, like you said, Greg. They refer to him as like a puppy right now because he's going to grow into one big mean dog as he really learns how to play. Look at the size. And for being that big, playing inside, able to move around, quite a factor when it comes to rushing the passer in certain situations. On second and 11, Stewart throws far side, incomplete, and a fine defensive play by Ty Law, Hines Ward, the intended receiver. Pittsburgh wide receivers today, just two catches for 13 yards, and not one of those receptions has been made by Plexico Burris. Yeah, Cordell doesn't like anything down the field. He almost wants to move and get out of there. Under pressure, Ty Law, nice, nice play by him, but really the perfect throw by Cordell Stewart. And isn't it amazing when you can't run the football, how it looks so disjointed for your football team? And the Steelers, not able to run it, now just hurts play action, quarterback draws, and all the other plays they use off of it. The blitz. Stewart on the run. Brought down across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Willie McGinnis, number 55, tracked him down. And onto the field comes the punting unit. Another fine defensive stand by the New England Patriots. And if I was the Pittsburgh Steelers, I would keep most of my people in because you know now it's not, it's just the rhythm. The New England Patriots are going to blitz you on every third down. We have a timeout on the field. 2.49 to play. We'll be back to Pittsburgh right after this. Mission out of this kick. Pittsburgh goes through its fourth third and out of the day. Troy Brown is deep. Josh Miller. Get away from Brown. Gets some distance on it. And gets it inside the 30-yard line. Oh, Bill Cower will love that one from his putter. 53-yard kick and no return. And see why CBS Monday. <laughs> What are they saying? Those two idiots that couldn't get their lines down? That, I don't know what they're saying. I know one thing. I would never want to be an actor and do a sitcom because that is some work they do. Yeah, they do. They work hard. They put a lot of hours in and benefits seem to be good, though. Yeah, yeah. You're not, they're not doing it for free. I know that. 2.42 on the clock. The Patriots with the ball at their own 30-yard line and one timeout remaining. They'll also get a stop the clock at the two-minute warning. This is J.R. Redmond. And Redmond, across the 35, moves the pile to the 36-yard line. Mike Jones, number 51. And both he and John Fiala have filled in on the Steeler defense for Earl Holmes very well so far today. Yeah, they have. They're both athletic. The Steelers, they just have a lot of good linebackers. Pass this side to Troy Brown. And if the whistle blows, this play doesn't count. Before the ball was snapped, for start, New England, number 80. Five-yard penalty, it's still second down. Troy Brown feeling that screen just a little bit before the snap. Yeah, he knew just before the snap. I don't blame him. As fast as this defense runs to the football, I'd want to get it in my hands as quick as possible, too. Second and nine. Brady, that ball is tipped and falls incomplete. Jason Gilden got his hand on the football. And at a minute 59, we take our two-minute warning with New England with the ball. And a 7-3 with... With Brady and the Patriots want points on the board before the break. They need a first down here on third and nine. Here comes the blitz. Picked up well. The pass wide open in the middle of the field is Troy Brown. Inside the 45 to the 40-yard line and a first down. Well, the Patriots guessed right. They left everybody in to protect. You can see Tom Brady on the ground. Walk it off. And here's where you use your last timeout to let your quarterback get healthy. But look at the blitz pickup. Excellent. Two times a day he's been hit low. That was number 41, Lee Flowers. 
You know, you're not allowed to go low on a quarterback, but it looks like Lee Flowers did not have much choice to get to the quarterback. He had to go low. You'll remember Brady came up limping earlier from a hit as he dropped back to pass. And Drew Bledsoe has come onto the field. Drew Bledsoe, who left the team in week two with a chest injury and replaced then by Brady. And now Bledsoe with a walk to the far side of the field. Well, you know, Greg, the fact that Tom Brady is still limping and probably limping worse is not a good sign. Watch the hit. And it's just so hard to guess, and I'm not even going to do that. And both knees really buckle, gets twisted. But sometimes when you get hit like that, you can walk it off and you can see they're going to be okay. But as he was going towards the bench, uh, the bench, he actually started limping more. I think there is Patriots owner Bob Kraft. Well, what a tough spot for Drew Bledsoe. It took Tom Brady, I thought, a long time to get in rhythm and feel the pressure of the defense and start performing well. Drew Butzo been on the bench, like you said, Craig, for so long. And as you take another look, Drew Bledsoe's numbers on the year, he has thrown just 66 passes, completed 40 of them for 400 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. This is a first down. Bledsoe, throw, complete at the 25-yard line to David Patton. What a throw by Drew Bledsoe. Right off the bench, and well, I'll tell you, Greg, we've watched him practice some, and he hadn't lost anything off of that arm. 16 yards and a first down, first catch of the day by David Patton. Bledsoe on the move now. Heading for the sideline and is whacked out of bounds by Chad Scott. And that's very much the same kind of play that Bledsoe was injured earlier in the season. It was, and the coaches need to say, hey, Drew, we're down to number two. Tom Brady heads off the field, and let's go back and listen to this hit on the sideline. <laughs> saw him when he came into the game. It wasn't like, oh, I'm in and I've been out all year. He came in with slapping the players with great enthusiasm right away. He's in a good frame of mind, makes a good throw, and did a good job moving out of the pocket. Second and six. Bledsoe throws this side. That's complete to Patton, and Patton is out of bounds at about the 11. Let's go down to Armin Katayan. Armin. Greg, the preliminary report on Tom Brady is it's a lower left leg injury. He's gone to the locker room for observation. Status unknown at this point in time. Back to you. All right, Armin. I told you earlier, that time, the Steelers, Greg, they've been pressuring. They pressure all the time on defense. They drop back. They gave the Patriot wide receivers room, and Drew Bledsoe makes a good throw to the outside. Patriots have only scored three touchdowns their last 13 trips to the red zone. Bledsoe throwing corner of the end zone, touchdown! <laughs> celebrations in the Patriots executive box, celebrations around Drew Bledsoe on the field. Unbelievable, they put all three wide receivers to the right, they keep the tight end, they block it all, the Steelers blitz. Troy Brown against Jason Gilden. There's no way, I'm sorry, it was David Patton on the catch. I just figured it was Troy Brown because they throw every pass to him. But good blitz pick up and another good play by Bledsoe. Vinatieri's kick is good. David Patton has not caught a pass all day from Tom Brady. He just caught three, including a touchdown pass from Drew Bledsoe. 14-3 pass. Watch. Here comes Patton, goes to the inside. Everybody's to the inside trying to cover him. The Ravens had the same exact play. Elvis Gerback waited a little too long to throw it. If you remember, Brandon Stokely didn't get both feet in bounds in the corner of the end zone. The Patriots get Patton a little farther inside, give him more room to work with, and Drew Bledsoe makes a good throw. How about that man, Drew Bledsoe, oh. coming in? And, you know, you couldn't be in the spotlight anymore. Unbelievable. I tell you, it's got to be so exciting for him to come in and perform that way. Bledsoe three out of three for 36 yards in the touchdown. And from the 15-yard line, this is Troy Edwards. Edwards looking for running room. 
dancing and dances out of bounds at about the 27 yard line. Tom Brady going into the locker room with a definite limp. Actually looks like he's walking a little better now too, so. Well, that's not good when you see him hop. So the Steelers with the ball at their own 28 yard line, 50 seconds to play in all three of their timeouts. Impressive numbers for New England. Stewart's throw, sideline, complete and out of bounds to Troy Edwards. Stewart's pass is complete to Troy Edwards. That stops the clock with 45 seconds to play. Well, of course, what the Steelers would like to do, three timeouts, just give themselves a chance at kicking a field goal. And with 45 seconds and all three timeouts, Mike Malarkey can do whatever he wants. He could call some, he could call a running play and it wouldn't hurt their offense right now. Ward in motion to Stewart. Here comes the blitz. Picked up, pass over the middle, and that's across midfield and complete to Plexico Burris for 16 yards and a first down. Well, I was going to say, Greg, is New England going to play it safe? On defense, no is the answer. They came with another blitz, picked up wonderfully by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Timeout is called by the Steelers. That's their first and it stops the clock with 38 seconds left as you look at Drew Bledsoe on the side. I think Drew Bledsoe took that hit on his very first throw. He hung in there, and when he did, made the good throw over the top, but he took one underneath. Well, this is going to be an interesting halftime session for Bill Cowher. I think it's, it's not out of the realm of possibility to think that the Steelers are a little bit shocked here. They go through a 13-3 regular season, and as we said at the top of the day, dismantled the defending champions last week. Two things. It did... It has to make you feel a little disconnected, Greg. They're used to getting to the quarterback with their blitzes, always. Look at the number of sacks they had this year. They're also used to coming out and dominating you physically from their offense against your defense. Today, can't run the football and not get to the quarterback consistent. Stewart. Gets rid of the ball to the 31-yard line, incomplete, intended for Bobby Shaw. 33 seconds to play. Boy, Cordell Stewart hung in there. Mike Crable coming around and just a uh, half a second too late. Well, the reaction you're getting from the fans is... Yeah, I did not see the replay. It's on the board. Let's take a look at it. Under two minutes, it's being reviewed automatically upstairs. Remember, under two minutes, the officials upstairs do the reviews. And the whistle blows before the play is snapped. Paging Mr. Hockley to the camera. You know, but Bob, uh, Bobby Shaw didn't do like, he wasn't like over aggressive that he caught the football so I just figured he did. Okay, he, wasn't, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't upset about the incomplete call. Let's take a look. Nice throw under pressure by Cordell Stewart. That hmm. shot looks like both arms are under the football. It's got to be. Now We're listen. reviewing the ruling on the field to determine whether the pass was complete. Wow. It has to be conclusive. In that time, it looked like to me that it hit his hands, bounced up, and he caught it. Oh, Bobby Shaw is in his fourth season out of the university. You know, you, just to talk about Cordell, as Ed Hockley keeps looking at the replay, everybody keeps saying, hey, that Cordell really matured this year. And I always, Greg, what do we talk about? I just say, look, Cordell Stewart's got good ability. You bring in a Mike Malarkey, you run an offense that's good for his skills. You give him a good quarterback, Coach Tom Clemens. Now, you tell me the answer why he's playing a lot better. You know, yeah, I know he has matured and he's doing some things better, but he's being coached to bring out his skills, and that's why he had a good year. I reviewed the play. And there's not sufficient evidence from the replays to determine whether the ball, the tip of the ball, hit the ground. It did hit the receiver's finger, and then the ball rolled over, and I can't tell whether the tip hit the ground. Well, Therefore, the ruling on the field stands. 
pass was incomplete. It's second down. Well, that's as honest a rendition of a review as you can ask for from Ed Hockley. You're right. That says it all. We did say that there has to be conclusive evidence, and apparently he feels like it's not there. <laughs> so the pass is incomplete. 33 seconds on the clock, and it's second and 10. See, Bobby Shaw should have complained more. Pittsburgh has two timeouts remaining. Full screen. This side. Sherroway. Sherroway inside the 40 to the 35. Otis Smith made the stop. And timeout is called on the field and stops the clock with 23 seconds to play. Well, that little screen has done well for the Steelers today. Twice they've run it, twice they picked up big yardage. And it looks like one of the weaknesses they have found in New England's defense is this. Let them think, hey, I'm a good pass rusher. I'm getting to the quarterback quick. Oh, no, it's a screen. Did you see at the bottom of the screen there the shot that Otis Smith gave Plexico Burris coming off the line? These New England cornerbacks have played tight, tough football here in the first half. You know, though, I will say this. Usually we talk to some players, they never give credit to the other side. But talking to Ty Law and Otis Smith, they both, I, brought, I asked them, are these Steelers wide receivers as tough as we all make them out to be? And they go, yeah, you know, they're pretty good. They block down the field. They stay with their blocks and all. He says, I give them credit. They, they, they play hard and fight hard. Ty Law also says when you're playing the Steelers, you have to cover longer because of Cordell's ability to dance. Different look, three down linemen. First down pass, far side. It is incomplete and almost intercepted by Terrence Shaw, number 22. 18 seconds to play. If you're thinking field goal, this is what you would consider the trouble end of the field. The south end of the field is where Chris Brown and other kickers have had their adventures this season. There's no doubt the wind has died down. It really was blowing quite hard at the beginning of the game and uh, while we were watching warm-ups, but it has settled down, and so wind should not be near the factor. Second and 10 from the 34. Comes another blitz from the Patriots. Stewart down the middle. Incomplete. Penalty marker flies. To Bucky Jones and Otis Smith were down there. And it's against the Steelers. Yeah, right away you could just see the body language. Uh, Plexico Burris tells you he. Pass might have pushed interference. Off. Pittsburgh, number 80. Grab the defender and pull him away as the ball was in the air. It's a 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. You know what that was, too? That is, a, Greg, you know, you just can't stress this enough. Otis Smith never lost sight of the football, but kept exactly where he was supposed to be the whole play. He knew he had somebody in the inside helping him. He stayed outside of Plexico Burris. He didn't go for a fake in good position and probably would have had the interception if it wasn't for the interference. Oh, and what that has done is just push the Steelers out of any possible field goal chance at this stage. 12 seconds to play, second and 20 in the line of scrimmage to 44. We have one timeout. You can still throw it to the middle. Here comes the blitz. Stewart throwing far side, incomplete. And six seconds now on the clock. Well, what a turnaround. At least they looked like they were going to get a field goal chance. Now I think you have to throw it into the end zone. Or you throw a real quick short pass, get out of bounds, and you try an extremely long field goal, which I would say no. Hines, Ward, Plexico, Burris, and Bobby Shaw stacked to the top of your screen. Patriot defenders all falling back, and Stewart launches it downfield. Intercepted at the five. Terrell Buckley went up, grabbed the football, cut off any chance of the Steelers putting points on the board, and take a look at the scoreboard at halftime. The New England Patriots have come in here 
put 14 on the board, one on a special teams return. They lead it 14 to three. How about it? You lose your starting quarterback, you bring in a three-time Pro Bowler in Drew Bledsoe, and well, that has to make all the coaches and the players in that team feel confident that he can get the job done. For the Steelers, from the eight-yard line, it's Troy Edwards to the 20, the 25, and backed up a bit now inside the 25-yard line, and let's go down to Bonnie Bernstein. Well, Greg, Phil is correct when he said the Steelers need to throw the ball more. Cower said he'd like to do that, but he'd also like to get Jerome Bettis more involved. I asked if Bettis was hurt because he really wasn't involved in the latter part of the first half. He said, no, we want to try to get him more involved. He only had five carries for three yards. Defensively, they need to shut down Troy Brown as a receiver and on special teams. You know what kind of damage he did there. Well, and that plays into what Bill Belichick wants for his team because he wants Cordell Stewart to beat him having to throw the football. Bettis in the backfield. Stewart on the run. Going nowhere. Richard Seymour wrapped him up. Loss of two on the play. It's second and 12 as you look at the numbers from halftime where the Patriots have the edge in both passing yardage and total yards. Well, Patriots have the edge in just about everything, Greg. And Pittsburgh trying to get Cordell involved right away. They run a quarterback sweep or a draw, whatever you want to call it. New England, good position. They did not let him run anywhere. Stewart on the quick slant. That one's complete to Hines Ward. And Hines Ward has a first down. Patriots pick up a loose football, and there's been no whistle, apparently. Ty Law has the ball. There was no whistle to blow that play dead. I did not hear it. Nobody did. So the only thing the Steelers can hope for, that he was actually down on the ground. Ed Hockley is down at the 15-yard line of the Steelers. Let's Watch take it. a look. Well, that's going to be another close call for Ed Hockley. It was not ruled a fumble on the field. Nope. The ruling on the field is that the ball came loose before he touched the ground by contact. Therefore, it's New England's ball, first down. Well, what could happen, even if Bill Cower challenges it, maybe we'll see some more replays, but there's got to be conclusive evidence, Greg. That would be the big one, because when you saw him rolling over, we lose sight of the football. Watch Troy, I mean, Heinz Ward. Well, Bill Cower just cast that red flag onto the field, so he will challenge it. And there is a little doubt, as you could see the arms move before his knees hit the ground. See, when I say all these things, I look for approval in the booth. I saw a lot of people shaking their heads like, yes. Well, you know, we've spent the season with you. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Bill Cower, Bill Cower has gone to the sidearm delivery now with the, uh, with the throwing of the red flag. Ruling on the field that the runner was not down by contact. And it had to be moving before that. Next time I go to Vegas, you stay home, okay? <laughs> no, I still was right in that first call. After reviewing the play, the Pittsburgh player's helmet hit the ground before the ball came loose. Therefore, the runner was down by contact. Result of the play is the first down at the 44-yard line. Please reset the clock to 14-18. All right, well, you couldn't see the football. Watch Hine Ward's helmet. The only thing, your hand, your foot, or the ball keeps it moving, so they're saying his hel helmet hit the ground, so the ball was still in possession. The helmet would be the same as the elbow, Greg, as we were talking about the play before. So, Bill Cower feeling he caught a break with 14-18 to play here in the third. And the New England defense back onto the field. You think Ed Hockley's going to sleep well tonight? I'll bet he does. He's getting some running in from the replay booth to the field because it's about as far away as you can get it. And he's going to go over and discuss it with Bill Belichick. Well, the line of scrimmage is the Pittsburgh 36. In a game that has been contested the way this one has been so far, the Steelers may have dodged a bullet there. 
Dennis and Whitman in the backfield. Lost the football. It's on the ground at the 35, and this time the Patriots say they have it, and they do. Wow, so many times a day, Cordell Stewart is having trouble with the snap. That's got to be about four times. I've seen him double catch it twice. He fumbled it once before in this fumble. Teddy Bruschi came up with the loose ball. Well, I really can't see what causes Cordell. It looked like a good snap. It looked like he did not stay with the center long enough, and who gets the recovery? Teddy Bruschi. Teddy Bruschi, number 54. Line of scrimmage, the Pittsburgh 35. Drew Bledsoe calling signal. Brady still on the sideline. Bledsoe going deep and overthrows Troy Brown, number 80. Well, the quarterback has changed, but the philosophy sure hasn't. Well, this is where they want to take the shots, Greg. Once they get down inside the 40 near the 30-yard line, again, the Steelers, no blitz. So they're going to allow the quarterback to get that little bit of extra time in these situations to throw it down the field. Tom Brady taped at halftime. A spectator here in the second half so far. New England's offense goes to five wide receivers on second and ten. That will be David Pat. Pat dodges the first tackler and is wrestled out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Chad Scott was the first man to hit him. It'll be third and seven. Well, I'm just thinking about as I watch the game, Drew Bledsoe. I was thinking about, you know, you think about the game the night before, even as an announcer like a player does. And I, I thought about Drew Bledsoe last night like, going, wow, what a tough season that he's had to endure. But a lot of Patriot players and coaches give him credit for not being a distraction in a tough situation like he's been in. Even Tom Brady told us earlier this season it hasn't been a distraction thanks to Drew Bledsoe. Third and seven. Oh, look at the protection. And now it breaks down. And he throws it and flips it over his head. There's a marker down. And a second marker is down. He must be feeling good. <laughs> Thinks oh. he's Michael Jordan doing a reverse layup or something, throwing it without looking. But he flipped it over his head, trying to hit J.R. Redmond. Again, the blitz. Look at the protection. Rodney Bailey, number 94, and Drew Bledsoe throwing the football. Watch this. He sees the running back. <laughs> wow. There That's were fouls by both teams on the play, holding defense number 31. There was also intentional grounding by the quarterback, number 11. The penalty's offset. Replay third down. Yeah, so they called it intentional grounding, and that is a good call. He's avoiding the sack, even though I really believe he was trying to get it to the running back. Sure, right number there. 21 was right there in front of him. So we'll replay the third and seven. Fans to their feet, waving towels. Steelers have not trailed at halftime all season long in this stadium. Bledsoe hit as he was letting the ball go. Incomplete pass is ruled by Ed Hockley. Jason Gilden, who has been a terror for the Steelers, was the man who applied the hit. Well, they're doing a good job. Why does he get hit here? It's just because they cover him down the field. And Drew Bledsoe. Well, that's a close play, too. Did he get that arm moving forward before he's hit and fumbled the ball? But it does not do any good. It wouldn't be great for Pittsburgh to challenge that play. They could not get possession of the football. On fourth and seven, Bledsoe. Throws out to the side, incomplete. Troy Brown had it and had blockers in front of him. Let's keep this fourth down attempt in mind. 12.55 to play in the third. We're coming back to Pittsburgh after this. 
Thursday on CBS, for seven years, no drama had beaten ER until CSI came along. See why it's the most watched drama of the season. Don't miss an all-new CSI Thursday here on CBS, America's most watched network. From the 32-yard line. Stewart to throw. Down the middle. Complete, close to the 50-yard line. Plexico Burris. First down, Pittsburgh. Well, that might be as comfortable as I've seen Cordell Stewart all day long. Finally gets some protection, gets a receiver who's open, and just throws it perfectly into the chest of Plexico Burris. On the outside, Otis Smith is on the outside of the receiver, so where they want to throw it, you want to throw it inside. How about that hand-to-hand -hand combat between Hines Ward and Ty Law? Burris just two catches for 31 yards. Jerome Bettis, a couple of yards just across midfield. Teddy Bruschi, Willie McGinnis. Important to keep in mind now that the Pittsburgh Steelers are out of challenges. That's right. They've used both of theirs today. Bill Cowher has a sore arm from throwing that red flag. Just 35 total yards rushing for the team that led the NFL in rushing this season. And how long was Cordell's run? So if you take his one scramble out of there, they basically have done nothing running the football. Oh, good hit by Anthony hit Pleasant. At the line of scrimmage by Anthony Pleasant. What did Bill Belichick say to us last night? I am not worried about Jerome Bettis running. He might get some five-yard runs, but he's not going to rip off a 40-yarder against us. And Anthony Pleasant follows Bill Parsons. Bill Parsons, Bill Belichick, everywhere he goes. Oh, he's been with Bill Belichick. What did we count up? About eight years. He's one of those players that Bill Belichick is just comfortable to have around on the team. Likes him as a player, but even likes him more as a person. A good example for all the young players. Third and six now for Stewart and the Steelers. Stewart over the middle, and that's complete. And then a first down to Troy Edwards. Nice job again, Cordell Stewart, just being patient. Doesn't get nervous. You know, maybe a year or two ago, he had have broke out of that quarterback uh, pocket a little too early. But this time, all the way from the outside, the Patriots matching up. Troy Edwards does not catch a lot of balls, so they put Shaw on him, who is the fourth defensive back. Penalty markers fly. Stewart over the middle. Tip. Intercepted. To Bucky Jones has the football. Still on his feet and down at the 32-yard line. My guess is that the Patriots jumped offside. Anthony Pleasant jumped early. Offside. New England, number 98, in the neutral zone at the snap. That's a five-yard penalty. The interception is overturned. Repeat first down. Well, Bill Cower sees another break come his way. 10.04 to play here in the third. Well, if I was the Pittsburgh Steelers, I wouldn't even first think of running. Five. Well, maybe now, the first and five, you could sneak a run in there. Look at Cordell Stewart's numbers. Playing pretty well today. Well, you have to be impressed by this defense that the New England Patriots have thrown up here this afternoon. First and five, Stewart's going to throw it. Going to go down the far sideline, and it's incomplete, and a penalty marker is thrown. Plexico Burris working against Otis Smith. What did Heinz Ward tell us? He said, Cordell Stewart has become so comfortable with Plexico Burris, if he sees him one-on-one, -on -one, he'll throw it up there and let him go get it. Well, because he's smart. That's why. Because look at Burris. Otis Smith, not one of the small corners Pass in the league. Insurance, New England, number 45. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. First down. And Plexico Burris, Greg, is such an intimidating and such his size it's easy for a quarterback to throw those footballs up 
to let him go over the top of the defensive back or stop and make the, the throw that you throw behind him. Plexico Burris has scored seven touchdowns in his last 11 games. First down from the 21. Stewart to the corner of the end zone and overthrows everybody. And that was Otis Smith over there who well, appears to be following Plexico Burris all over the well, field. He is. He's matching up against him and they're putting Ty Law on Heinz Ward. But again, Otis Smith, no one. The defense knew he had help inside, and Burris is making moves, but he's not going for him because he knows he doesn't have to. Second and ten. Stewart on a draw to the 17. Boy, did you see how tight Otis Smith was on Plexico Burris? Yeah. I tell you, I don't know. I'm very impressed with what they've done against Cordell Stewart's runs. And, you know, when you talk about it, well, how does a quarterback in his runs, how they become so effective? Well, you think about it this way. You have an extra blocker. Usually the defense can outnumber you. But when the quarterback runs, you get your extra blocker to help him. And it makes it, well, it makes it easier for the offense to get to get those holes, get them blocked, and that's why he's been very good at that. A big third and five for Stewart. Throw. Incomplete and almost intercepted by Willie McGinnis. I didn't even see Willie McGinnis. I'm watching the receiver. It's Burris. He's open. McGinnis covering the back. Does a good job falling off and getting his hands up. So here's Chris Brown to attempt what will be about a 34-yard field goal. He hit a 30-yarder at the other end of the field earlier. That was blocked. Rolling, picked up by Troy Brown. Troy, no, it's number 23. And that's Antoine Harris. And Antoine Harris has taken it to the end zone for a touchdown. Troy Brown picked it up and laddles it to Harris. What a play by and, Troy Brown. And another special teams touchdown for the New England Patriots. Here's the kick. We think Brandon Mitchell, 96, comes through, knocks it down. And Troy Brown, nothing to lose, goes to the pickup. Nice pickup, and then gets rid of it. Antoine Harris, a second-year defensive back out of Virginia, took it the rest of the way, and Adam Vinatieri is on to add the extra point. Troy Brown took it about 11 yards. Harris, the rest of the way, about 49. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 8.51 to play in the third quarter. The Patriots extend their lead to 21-3. Don't think it's looking so terrific right now. Their Steelers trail 21-3. Troy Edwards, Lindsey Jackson are deep. This will be Edwards from the six. Special teams. Pulled down across the 20 yard line. Tom Brady on one leg can celebrate with the best of them. We'll be right back. Field goal, one good. Jerome Bettis in the backfield. Let's see what the Steelers do here with 8.41 to play in the third. Stewart still has it. Going to throw it to the near side, and that's complete to Bettis. And Bettis is across the 30 and out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Let's go back to that block field goal. Well, what it is, Brandon Mitchell just overpowers. I can't even circle. There's so many people down inside. Just overpowers the blocker, knocks it down, and just a terrific play by Troy Brown. Now talking to Bill Belichick yesterday, Greg, he says, I just hope to get one turnover to give us a scoring chance. In other words, you know, whatever it is,
give my offense a short field. Well, today, two touchdowns off of special teams. Pittsburgh's field goal problems continue. Stewart, with plenty of time, throws, and that is complete inside the 45-yard line. Nice grab by Heinz Ward. Well, what they're doing, Cordell Stewart, this is about the fourth time today the receiver has been covered down the field. Watch Heinz Ward, double move, fake, go deep. Ty Law's all over it. But Heinz Ward looks back for the football before Ty Law does. Perfect throw by Cordell Stewart. Heinz Ward set a single season record with 94 receptions for the Pittsburgh Steelers this season. To New England 44. And Amos Zeraway with nowhere to go. Willie McGinnis, who has had several big plays here today, stopped him for a loss of two. And number 52, Ted Johnson, also went on the stop. It'll be second and 12. Well, I guess it's so much for being undersized, this New England defense. Undersized. I was worried they might get pushed around. Excuse me. Hurry up offense by Pittsburgh makes New England call a timeout. So the Steelers force the Patriots into using one of their timeouts and while we have the opportunity here's our NFL.com interactive poll for today. Which of the championship game quarterbacks has the best chance at breaking Phil Simms Super Bowl completion percentage record? Log on, cast your vote at NFL.com There's Romeo now. You know, coaches when you're coordinators you try to wear something on the sideline that makes you stand out. Now what do you think? I think Romeo can stand out with that outfit. That is the brightest red jacket and shirt I've seen in a long time. Boy, there's Tom Brady. Could you have written a script like this for the Patriots so far today? Two special teams touchdowns and yep. a touchdown pass from ostensibly your backup quarterback, although every team in the league would love to have a backup the caliber of Drew Bledsoe. The third string quarterback is Damon Hewitt. He's won a few games as a starter in this league too. Second and 12, Stewart eludes the rush, pulls it down, and now is on the run. Tripped up and goes down at about the 43. That's a pickup of three, and it'll be looking at a third and nine. That's what happens. You know, the, the better the competition gets, usually it makes it much harder for quarterbacks to run, and that's what we've seen here today. New England in good position. Of course, they're very knowledgeable of the fact that Cordell Stewart will run with running plays, and he'll scramble out of the pocket when receivers are not open. Third and nine. What a nice job, Cordell Stewart hanging on to the football. But Amos Zeraway acted like he was going to block, and at the last second, he snuck out of the backfield, and Teddy Bruschi has no chance to get over and cover him. He's up to the top of your screen. He snuck out, and Teddy Bruschi does not see him come through the line of scrimmage. Nobody covered him. And that's why he was wide open for the first down. Amos Zeraway, the Steelers' leading receiver on the day with four catches for 50 yards. From the 24. Comes the blitz. Stewart throws far side, and that one is complete to Ward. And Ward run out of bounds by Ty Law. A little extra over there. Gets him a penalty play. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, New England. Number 24, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. The one statement that comes back to me from Ty Law when we talked to him yesterday, we're not good playing passive football. Yeah, they like to be aggressive. Here's why he was upset. Hines Ward, straight arm to his face for a long time. Patriots committed just one penalty in the win over the Raiders last week. That is their eighth today. Heinz Ward told in training camp this year about Bill Cowher. 
you will be the starter. And he rewarded the coach with a solid year. First and goal for the Steelers. Stewart throws at the goal line, batted down by Tabucky Jones, intended for the tight end, Jeremy Tumor. Well, I got to tell you, this is the play. You remember I was talking to Bill Belichick about a play that the Steelers always run? This penalty is against the Patriots. Illegal hands to the face, New England, number 91. Half the distance to the goal, and on an automatic first down. That's Bobby Hamilton guilty of the foul, and it's a first and goal again for Pittsburgh. Well, you like your red zone defense, but I don't know if you're going to get to play it if you keep committing these penalties. Oh, Brian Cox looking up the receiver underneath. John Whitman. So it moves the ball now to the four-yard line. You know, Brian Cox model, well, if it moves, you just got to hit it. Zeroway and Whitman in the backfield. Come on, come on. The pitch for Zeroway trying to turn the corner inside the five, diving for the end zone. Did he get there? No. What a job by Amos Zeroway. It looks like New England's going to get him for about a two to three yard loss, but with his speed, able to outrun him to the outside. Watch what happens. Roman Pfeiffer to the outside has it. Well, you know what? Ed Hockley would have another session on his hands, but the Pittsburgh Steelers are fresh out of challenges. Yeah, and that's definitely a touchdown. It looks like he crosses the end zone line before it hits the pylon. So on second and goal. Straight ahead. Bettis looking for the end zone. No touchdown call yet, and now it is. Pittsburgh Steelers took advantage of the penalties. And the bus keeps on rolling at the goal line. That is the 16th rushing touchdown here at home for the Steelers this season. Opponents have registered just one. That one came on the regular season finale. Chris Brown's extra point attempt is good. And a little pushing and shoving down on the field by the goal line. 5-11 to play in the third quarter. Jerome Bettis back on the field, back in the end zone. 21-10, Patriots. Jerome Bettis' touchdown has reignited the Steeler fans with 5-11 to play in the third as Pittsburgh pulls to within 21-10. Number 21, J.R. Redmond. Number 35, Patrick Pass are deep for the kick. A yard deep in the end zone is Pass. 20, 25, 30 to the 33 yard line. Lindsey Jackson made the stop and a reminder. Tonight, on 60 Minutes, was the FBI's legendary J. Edgar Hoover part of a conspiracy to put an innocent man in prison and let a guilty man go free? That's tonight on 60 Minutes. Well, I know what the Steeler defense is going to do. It's going to be aggressive and it's angry because they're down and what happened in the first half. My question is, can the New England offense, what do you take now? What type of approach? Do you try to run it or do you stay aggressive? On the ground, right off the bat. Antoine Smith carrying the ball for three, and it'll be second and seven. You know, we talked about what New England, Greg, what they wanted to try to do, throw the football, throw it down the field, all that. And I remember saying, well, what do you, and they said, if we get way ahead, we're going to start running it. And I laughed. I go, oh, 
if you get way ahead like that's going to happen. But they do have a sizable lead. Of course way ahead is open to interpretation too. Movement before the snap. Before the ball was snapped, false start. New England, number 77. Five yard penalty, and it's still second down. The right guard, Mike Compton, moved early. Well, when you only have one wide receiver in the game, that pretty much tells you you're going to run the football. But now they take Antoine Smith out. Look at the penalties. They, a lot of times, too, Greg, you look at stats like that, you, you get more penalties. When you're playing a team that's more aggressive and faster, hard to block when they get in position sometimes. Let's say over the middle, Redmond separated from the football. John Fiala got there at about the same time the ball did. It'll be third and 12. Fiala in place of Earl Holmes in good position. Boy, nice hit. Now, what the Patriots have to watch here, and you can feel it, the Steelers getting up a little bit ahead of steam in the momentum department. Bledsoe goes down at the 21. Little crossover action on the front defensive line by the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they got to the quarterback. Well, the initial pass protection is very good. They're blocking them. There's another movement up front. Bledsoe has the time, but the receivers can't get open quick enough. <laughs> Troy Edwards stands at his own 35. Low, bouncing, taken at the 40. Coming this way, gets a big block. Midfield, going back the other way, to the 45, the 40. Pushed out of bounds by Walter at the 32-yard line. A 38-yard punt, a 29-yard return. Good job by Troy Brown, not letting the football bounce. Myron Bell, terrific block. Another good block as he goes across the field. And Troy Edwards gives the Steelers a short field to work with. Boy, what did we say just a moment ago about a shift in momentum? The line of scrimmage, the New England 32. First time all day, the Steelers begin a drive in New England territory. Stewart to throw. Deep sideline pattern. It is incomplete and out of bounds. Plexico Burris, the intended receiver. Well, the one thing you can never question, watch Burris, he is out of bounds. Has to jump and catch Second the football. Never the gave move. Cordell Stewart enough room to throw the football, but when you talk about Cordell Stewart, you heard Bill Belichick talk about him last night, Greg. He went out to Colorado when he was a senior and timed Cordell Stewart, all the running backs and wide receivers, and he goes, wow, the fastest guy out there is the quarterback. Plus, he has a really strong arm. On second and ten. Near side, and that's Kreider out of the backfield, and Kreider belted out of bounds by Ty Law. By Ty Law. Don't want to belabor that point about a shift in momentum, but in this quarter, Pittsburgh has 10 first downs to none for New England. Well, I don't think you can overdo the point, Greg, because it's evident. The Steelers now, Cordell Stewart getting more time to throw the football. He looks more comfortable. Receivers all of a sudden are getting open. Third and one. Stewart holding on to it and has a first. 
down. And you know, sometimes in situations like this, it does become easier for you. You're behind. You're the aggressor. You're the one taking the chances. And on the other side, you don't know what to do. You're oh, back pedaling, trying to protect, hoping something goes good for you, and it becomes harder to defend when you do that. It's like the fight in the last round. He has to have a knockout to win. 205 to play in the third. Stewart throws wide open inside the 15-yard line is Burris. Burris still on his feet and now out of bounds. And penalty markers are down. Here's Ed Hockley. There was no foul on the play. The runner had already stepped out of bounds. The run did result in a first down, though. That's a big break for the Steelers. Hines Ward gets a block in the back. Here it comes against Ty Law. The runner, he says, Burris had already stepped out of bounds when the block occurred. Here it is. Out of bounds with the left foot. The block is right in front of him. You can see Ty Law starting to fall forward. Cordell Stewart missed Hines Ward in the back of the end zone. He was wide open for the touchdown. The ball just outside of the 10-yard line. First and 10 for Pittsburgh. Zero in. Zero in up the middle. Got the Patriots defense guessing. Teddy Bruschi just gets devoured by Marvell Smith on the inside, and Amos Airway has that little extra speed to make it work. First Browns extra point attempt is good. The Pittsburgh Steelers rejoice. 129 to play in the third. The Patriots lead is down to four. All right, Jerome, welcome back to a fired-up Heinz Field where Steeler fans have seen Troy Edwards' 28-yard punt return set up Pittsburgh's second touchdown in the last three minutes and 42 seconds. Patrick pass from the two. 20. To the 28 yard line. Brought down by the Shade Townsend. And a reminder CBS Super Friday kicks off with Super Bowl's greatest commercials of all time, followed by an all new episode of the new hit series, First Monday. And then don't miss the live Super Bowl bash with LL Cool J, Rebecca Romaine Stamus, Sting, and more. Friday here on CBS, America's most watched network. Drew Bledsoe in the huddle. Trying to reinstill some fire on in relief of Tom Brady. This is like the start of the game all over for the Patriots offense. Crowd noise. And they spread the field with five wide receivers. Quick pass over the middle, in and out of the hands of Jermaine Wiggins. Let's go down to Armin Katayan. Armin. Greg, just a follow-up in the locker room at halftime. Bill Belichick, and the last thing he did was draw his team together and tell them they were going to face ex exactly something like this. He said, you have to stay alert, you have to be physical, but most of all, you have got to keep your composure in a game like this. Composure that is going to be sorely tested right now. Back to you. All right, Armin. Armin's got an eel around his neck. Wow. Second and ten. Oh, movie star. Let's so throws and on the end cut. That's complete to Charles Johnson, number 81. Wow, what a throw. Brent Alexander on a big hit. New England wide receivers today, when they are catching the football, they are paying the price. But another rocket by Drew Bledsoe. Beautiful. 
On the sideline, Tom Brady cheering Drew Bledsoe on as the Patriots register their first first down this quarter. It comes with less than a minute to play. And there's movement on the front line again. Well, you're just making them sit there too long. Before the ball was snapped, ball start. New England, number 64. Five-yard penalty, it's still first well, down. Well, you have to say this. They're spacing him out. That time it was Greg Robinson Randall, the guilty party. Well, you know, listen, when you look at this, Tim Lewis, the defensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers, he creates this havoc because how about we talked to him yesterday. I said, hey, coach, when's the best time to blitz? And he started laughing, and he goes, right after the blitz, you just run. <laughs> so blitz him one down, come back, pressure the offense constantly. That's what he believes in, and that's what they do. Patriots have been guilty of five false starts today. Bledsoe finds his man, Brown, across midfield and into Pittsburgh territory at the 48-yard line. And with that time, will run down on the third quarter. The AFC Championship has 15 minutes to decide a winner. That's the end of the third. New England leads at 21-17. We're coming back after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. And a berth in Super Bowl 36. 21-17 as we start the fourth. Antoine Smith ducks it out to the right side, looking for running room. And he's just surrounded by Steelers. John Fiala and Joey Porter led the charge. It'll be second down. Well, no, they're going to measure it to see if it is a first down. This will turn out. Measurement to the ground. And from the spot of the ball, it looks. Don't guess. I know. Don't even do it. It was easier in the snow last week. Well, you can you can hear. Just listen to it now, Greg. The crowd's quieted down. Drew Bledsoe throwing that big end cut. Then another nice throw by him, standing in there with pressure all around him. And they pick up a couple first downs. And hey, it just takes the pressure. Again, I've said this off the play calling. It takes it off your offense. They've changed field position. And always on offense, when you get a first down or two, it puts you in rhythm. It just makes it a lot easier to execute the plays. Bledsoe with a touchdown pass in relief of Tom Brady here today. Antoine Smith cuts it back and finds running room inside the 40 to about the 38 or 39 yard line and a little power running shown by Antoine Smith. Well, in patience, I don't know if it was patience or he just realized there was nowhere to go. And finally, the Steelers, they just overrun the ball and he cuts it back for a nice game. Antoine Smith, what I say last week, he told us, I got no wiggle in my game. I take it straight ahead, but that time, Showed a lot of patience to get the football up inside for good yardage. Straight ahead for a yard. Not much more than that. Jason Gilden, who has had a monster game on defense, makes the stop after the gain of a yard, and it's third and three. You know, Jason Gilden, linebacker like the Steelers, they've had so many good ones in the past, but just recognizes the play and gets down inside before anybody can even get a hand on in the blocking. The towel starts to wave again. Third and three. Gets rid of it, complete to Edwards out of the backfield for a first down to the 32. Good job by Drew Bledsoe. Yes, it was a Greg, a good job. One wide receiver in the game. You don't know where they're going to throw it. Lee Flowers from the top comes untouched. Bledsoe does a good job of getting in the air. Otherwise, that hit's really going to hurt and makes a good throw to Edwards out in the flat. So the Patriots have advanced now to the Pittsburgh 32. Redmond inside the 30 to the 28 yard line. Clock continues to move, 12 and a half to play in the fourth. I think as you watch this game today, and yeah, there are 21 points on the board by the Patriots, but 
14 from special teams. But as you watch these drives, it's amazing how many good things you've got to do just to get in position to try to score against the Steeler defense. It is, it's as good as advertised. There's really no weakness that you can just say we're going to pick on. And mainly because you don't get the time to throw the football. Redmond cuts it back inside, diving for the 25-yard line and is just short. Well, you were bringing up a point to me as we see that run. Scores 21 to 17. You asked me, why don't they go for two points and make it a three-point game? I said, it's too early. Because if you go for two and you miss, 21-16, are you going to hold the Patriots scoreless for the rest of the game? Now, if they do kick a field goal, a touchdown by you can tie it. I, de I declined math as a second major. A big third and four. Bledsoe. This side. And it is to Fred Coleman, number 84. And the officials are still talking about it down here. Off the ground, skipped off the ground. And, and not enough for him to turn overturn it. Overturn it. Yeah. And he's explaining it to Bill Belichick. So now Adam Vinatieri, who hit two huge field goals in the snow a week ago, will attempt the field goal from 44 yards out. As he looks to give New England a seven-point lead. Got it away. Long enough. Straight enough. And it's good. He was good. Adam Vinatieri, another clutch field goal. 24-17, New England. Of the AFC Championship game, it's New England by a touchdown. Greg Gumbel, Phil Sims, Armin Katayam, Bonnie Bernstein, and our ace CBS sports crew. 11-12 to play in regulation. From the seven yard line, it's Troy Edwards. 25, 30, and down at about the 33 yard line. And let's check in with Bonnie downstairs. Bonnie. Well, Greg, this might be a good time to point out that Bill Cowher told us in his 10 years coaching here in Pittsburgh, and keep in mind, he's taken this team to a Super Bowl and four AFC championships. He has never coached a team that has this much resolve and this much emotion on a weekly basis. And he talked about how they've won coming from behind and how they've won in overtime. And of course, they haven't had Jerome Bettis in six games. And on Cordell Stewart, he said in 97 in the AFC championship, he was a happy-go-lucky kid. Now it's all about football. Thank you, Bonnie. From the 33, Cordell Stewart with the handoff, and Jerome Bettis can't get anywhere. I think Bonnie was reading my mind. That's that's not easy to do, by the way. But you know, Bill Belichick said he wants, I want to make this game, I want it to be won by Cordell Stewart. And right now, Cordell Stewart has done everything pretty well. He has not committed to big turnover. He's seeing the receivers when they get open most of the time, making good, safe throws. And it's just another statement of how he's improved and become a better quarterback, especially this year. Stewart to throw on second and 10. Burris. And Burris, just short of the 50 yard line, makes the catch for a first down. Well, he got it. You know, as I say that, Cordell got a little lazy on the throw. Really didn't fire his legs into it, so the football ends up being short, even though Plexico Burris makes the catch. Again, Otis Smith overplaying down the field, and the receivers are stopping, coming back, and making the catches. Stewart, far side of the field, and that one is complete to Hines Ward, and Hines Ward about a yard or two shy of a first down, but a fine throw that time by Stewart. Yeah, it really is, and, and the key to their passing offense is, if you're going to play us and let us play man-to-man -man outside, in which the Patriots are doing, if you play outside, we're going to throw the football inside, and vice versa, so if you're going to be a quarterback for a Bill Cowher team, 
you've got to be able to throw to the edges of the field. Boy, are we getting a lesson in cornerback play today from Ty Law and Otis Smith? A lot of pressure's being put on them, and so far they've done pretty well. On second and one, Stewart gonna throw, has his man open, it is bobbled and dropped, and a penalty marker flies. I'm watching it. I don't know who they're going to call against. It's going to be against Burris. It's all the official look back. But boy, you know what really sticks out? He is such a great target. Pass interference, Pittsburgh, number 80. Push off. 10 yard penalty. Repeat watch the hand to hand combat. Oh, yeah, got that hand oh. outside. Oh, boy, just swatted Otis Smith around, but good call. But Greg, it just, as we stand up here and we're 75 to 100 yards away, you can just see his physical presence just overwhelms everybody else on the football field. Pleading his case to his coach on the sideline. What did Heinz Ward tell us? Plexico Burris has always been able to get by just with wonderful talent. This year he really started working at it, and that's why he's had a good year. Stewart this time on the run, throws this side, and that's complete to Ward. Yeah, Warden was saying he he was one of the guys who took Plexico under his wing, taught him how to watch game film, encouraged him to do more work on his own. And run routes the proper way. Very common for college athletes to come into the pros and not have good work habits. So they think they're good until you get in the pros, then you realize you're not a worker. Or, you know, doing certain things on the practice field right because they've always been so much better than everybody else they've gone against. Here's a big third down for Stewart in the Steeler offense. No blitz this time. And here it comes, here just it comes. as you say that. Stewart down the sideline. It is incomplete intended for number 81, Troy Edwards. And Terrence Shaw was with him and may have caught a little bit of the ball with his shoulder. Well, blitzing. Greg, it's all about timing. Look to the outside. Here come the two blitzers, but look at the pickup. Zaraway with a good job, and Cordell Stewart recognizes it, makes another good throw. Edwards drops it. So Troy Brown is deep for the kick. Sky high. Fair catch called for. And Brown makes the catch at the 18-yard line. We have a marker down at about the line of scrimmage. Boy, Gerard Cherry, Greg. It's against New England. He almost, he was through free. Looked like he was going to block the punt. After the ball was punted, holding New England number 52. It's a 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. New England keeps the ball, first down. So Ted Johnson guilty of the penalty. It'll back the Patriots up. Pretty bad field position, but they've got the ball with a one touchdown lead and 8.20 to play. The catch and the fumble. Well, you've heard a lot about the Pittsburgh defense, and rightfully though this season. It led the NFL in allowing yards per game, rushing yards per game, and number of first downs allowed. And now it has the advantage of field position. Bledsoe to throw. Deep. This side of the field. Tipped down. Almost caught by David Patton. David Patton is so fast that you just can't even imagine it until you get in a foot race with him. But I couldn't see who put the pressure on Drew Bledsoe. If he has just a little more time, it's gonna be a touchdown. Dwayne Wash, look at David Patton just pulling away. He gets his hand on the football. I think it was Kendrell Bell was on the blitz and got in the face of Drew Bledsoe where he, he was about a two yards short on the throw. Second and 10. Bledsoe to the air again, a little hop, and the pass completed to Mark Edwards out of the backfield across the 15 to the 16-yard line. In past years, we've made reference to that little hop when Bledsoe throws, and that's when you know he's feeling his rhythm and he's on his game. Oh, he's going to, he's, hey, it's going to be a strike when he gets that hop in there. And, it, Greg, you know why? That means he gets the time. 
There's nobody in front of him, so he can hop. But when he does that, he's just too good. He's going to hit the receiver. Clock moving, 7.40 to play in the fourth. And a big third and three facing the Patriots. Bledsoe throws, and that's complete to Jermaine Wiggins. Forward progress is going to get a first down, I think. Wow, what a catch, because Bledsoe, he threw that awfully hard. Jermaine Wiggins has turned into a weapon here the last couple weeks. And Jermaine Wiggins had 14 receptions during the regular season, had 10 catches for 68 yards last week against Oakland. Oh, right at his face. Tough catch, and he comes up with it. Mike Logan, a safety on the coverage. Go inside, fake, come back outside. Good play by Wiggins. So a first down for the Patriots out to their own 20-yard line. Bledsoe throws this side almost intercepted by Joey Porter. It looked like it was going to be one of those replays from last week where David Patton makes a catch on his knees. It never got that far. Well, I tell you what, I've said this a couple times today. It's just a case in point. These defenses, when you make these throws during the regular season, the linebacker never gets there, and all of a sudden you make the same throw, and Joey Porter almost intercepts it for a touchdown. The talent level has gone up. Decision-making has to change because of that. Bledsoe has thrown on four consecutive downs. This will be a fifth. Running out of time. On the move, and it's down at the 20. Boy, good job. That's so hard for a quarterback to pull it down when he's trying to throw it down the field. And Drew Bledsoe looked at every single receiver. Nobody open. Just watch him. He looked down the field. He looks out for the short receiver. Then he gets both hands on the football to protect it. Good job. So now another one of those critical third down plays. Third and 11. And the clock coming up on six minutes to play in regulation. Bledsoe with time, lofts it out, and it's complete to Troy Brown and out of bounds for a first down. He has an arm like a howitzer, and he lofted that one up as softly as any pass you'll ever see. That was so sweet, it's unbelievable. Drew Bledsoe knows that his receiver is running across the field and away from the defender, defenders and makes the perfect throw over the top. Look at the linebackers, Mike Jones. He knows the receiver's behind him, but there's so much more field to the outside, and Bledsoe, a perfect throw. Troy Brown, eight catches, 121 yards today, and don't forget a huge punt return. Antoine Smith to the 36. Well, what this has done, these two first downs, Greg, it's getting down to where you're limiting the Pittsburgh Steelers now, maybe one possession to try to tie the football game. Well, this says a lot about Drew Bledsoe, too. And we've talked about it already. But you know, during the week, he wasn't sitting around crying about the fact that he wasn't the starting quarterback. He's paying attention to what the coach was saying. And he's come in and he's played well. To say he's played well is an understatement. And second and 11, out here and overthrows Edwards, the intended receiver. It'll be third and 11. And also, I talk about the time of possession, cutting it down for the Steelers, maybe to one possession, but also they change field position. They're backed up, two first downs. Now it just makes it that much more difficult for the Steelers to go down the field and score. England has one timeout. Pittsburgh has all three of theirs. Bledsoe throws over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Patton. 
And slow to get up is number 72, Matt Light. Yeah, Charlie Weiss wants pass interference. You know, I'll just make this point. You talk about scrambling quarterbacks. One thing big, tall quarterbacks have that other guys don't sometimes. Drew Bledsoe able to see over and stand in there to the last second to almost complete the pass. Troy Edwards stands back at his own 23. Short. This one bounces, and he picks it off at the 21. And is knocked out of bounds. Forward progress will be marked at about the 21 or 22-yard line. 42-yard kick, three-yard return, and Cordell Stewart with 421 to play. He needs a touchdown for a tie. 21 on the clock. Stewart, quick slam, Burns across the 30 to the 32-yard line, and that's pretty close to a first down. You know, one thing I noticed, why New England's been blitzing and why they, uh, they did it coming to this game, because they're playing zone defense and not attacking the quarterback they're not covering receivers, and Cordell is completing passes with ease. 11-yard pickup, first down, Stewart and the Steelers going without a home. Looking for the draw, and it's not there. He may have lost a yard on the play. He did, it'll be second and 11. Mike Vrabel, Roman Pfeiffer closing on the quarterback. Gosh, they have done nothing with those quarterback runs today. Just another good example, Romeo Cornell really teaching his guys, especially the defensive line, stay in good position. Quick drop, throwing to the outside, and that one is complete to Jeremy Tuman, the tight end. Out to about 35, and no matter what the outcome of this game is, what does that tell you about, oh, the heavy favorites that sometimes teams are made in championship games, and. You know, in comes a team with a big heart that maybe wasn't counted on and turns things around completely. Well, you know, listen, Pittsburgh deserved to be the heavy favorite. They were the most consistent team by far from start to finish in the season. But New England, you know, the last half has been every bit the equal of the Steelers. Third and eight. Plenty of time for Stewart. Throws over the middle. Bounced up into the air and intercepted. Jones has the football inside the 40, inside the 35-yard line. Cordell Stewart trying to hang in there, throws the football about one yard too far in front of the receiver. Watch Cordell Stewart. Nice view. You're the quarterback. He looks to the outside. It's Heinz Ward. He leads him too much, and Tabucky Jones makes a nice interception. Third turnover of the day by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Jones with one interception during the regular season, and Cordell. He knows it. Wide open. By far, you know, I would by far his worst pass of the day because it was, you know, way too far offline for a quarterback who had protection and a wide open receiver. Pittsburgh with three timeouts remaining. Antoine Smith to the 33. And the Steelers burn a timeout right here. 2.35 to play in the fourth quarter. What a tale of three quarterbacks here at Heinz Field today. Cordell Stewart, Tom Brady, and Drew Bledsoe. Pittsburgh has two timeouts remaining. And now Bledsoe calls timeout. And that is the third and final timeout the New England Patriots have. There's Tim Lewis, the defensive coordinator, because a field goal is going to cost you the game. And right now, if it was a field goal by the Patriots, it would be about 50 to 51 yards. Cordell Stewart, 255 passing yards, a playoff career high, but he's also thrown two interceptions here today. On second and 10. Smith. And the whistle 
blows, and the Steelers stop the clock at 2.27. They have one timeout remaining plus the two-minute warning. Well, as you watch it, you like to guess with the team, will the Patriots run it or will they throw it? Throw it and get the first down, you're going to win the football game. If you don't get the first down, you try a long field goal. Well, you might remember they were fighting for their playoff lives last week in Foxborough. They came up to a big third down, and everyone in the stadium, including the Oakland Raiders, figured that they would throw it, and they ran it for a first down. That's right. The difference there, Greg, is they were ahead up there. I mean, they were down up there. They were ahead this time. Third and eight. J.R. Redmond, a good receiver, is in the game in the backfield. Same play they scored the touchdown on. Bledsoe steps up, throws to the far sideline, nobody there, incomplete. Same play, they threw the touchdown pass earlier in the game, and this time the Steelers changed defenses, or defense, and they covered very well. And here comes Vinatieri. This is another interesting call here. Do you go with the field goal attempt, and if you miss it, your field position is significantly worse. Well, you know, you got to go for it. You go for the, you try to win the game right here. You don't punt it and try to hold on at the end. You go for the win, kick the field goal. It's a 50-yard attempt by Vinatieri. He has a long this season of 54. On the way. Long enough, but why? Boy, Vinatieri, Adam Vinatieri hits it solid. You could hear the sound on your TV. You could see the spin just a little bit going to the left. And it's just enough because it's so long, it makes the football go left to the upright. Bill Cowher knows his team still has more than just a fighting chance. 2.15 on the clock. One timeout remaining, 60 yards from the end zone. Wow. Wow is right. Just sit back. With your seatbelt's fastened. Who goes to the Super Bowl? Blitz. Stewart overthrows everybody. Burris turned it in. Stewart was looking for him to take it up the field. Boy, you see coaches so many times. I've watched NFL films, and you stand on the sideline. What do we do? Well, you do what you've done the whole game, and that time again, the Patriots with the blitz, and they make Cordell Stewart basically throw it away. Second and ten. Safety's dropped deep. The pass over the middle, and that one's intercepted. This is Lawyer Malloy, and Malloy is down at midfield. It got away from Cordell Stewart again. Both interceptions, the ball just did not come out of his hand the way he had hoped. And Otis Smith, I was watching him the whole play, was so aggressive at the line of scrimmage, and then just trailed. Plexico Burris and causes the interception. He's underneath. The throw's going to go to your right. Nice step up. Otis Smith came under the receiver. Maybe that's what Cordell Stewart saw, so he throws it high, but Burris not able to jump up that high and get the reception. Look at Otis Smith. Nice job. Played the route. He guesses, and Bill Belichick knows that's it. His last three throws result in two interceptions. And now, on the ground, Antoine Smith will take it to the two-minute warning. 1.56 on the clock. The Patriots are that far from New Orleans. On Friday, and we uh, talk to the Steeler players, and you go, wow, how can they lose? And then you talk to the Patriots on Saturday, and you go, wow, how can they lose? 
Antoine Smith, right side, breaks through to the 40, to the 35, and pulls his way to the 32 for a first down. Well, that first down definitely wins the game for the New England Patriots. Bill Cowher wants to use his last timeout. But with the first down, they can kneel on the football and basically run out the clock. But you're right, that, Greg, we saw all the positives of the Steelers. Then we talk to the Patriots and they go, wait, just like the Blitz. Bill Belichick says, you know, we, we plan on blocking them. I don't know what you guys are thinking. We can figure it out. We'll get people in position to block their blitzers. Not that they were great on offense, but they were timely when they had to be. And on defense, that's where the credit goes. They stopped. They won it again in 1996. In 85, they went to Miami and beat the Dolphins 31-14 and advanced to Super Bowl 20. And then in 96, at home, they beat the Jacksonville Jaguars and moved on to Super Bowl 31. In both instances, the Super Bowl was played in New Orleans. And also, Greg, as you talk about this, two things. Drew Bledsoe, again, terrific job. And you cannot give it. You know why you see so many coaches and you, you see this big, big money they're being paid? It's because they deserve it. The New England Patriot coaches gave their players opportunities to come out here and execute, and they, and they did it. As time winds down here, we'll remind you the executive producers of the NFL on CBS are Sean McManus and Terry Ewart. The coordinating director of the NFL on CBS is Larry Cavalina, and the producer of today's game is Mark Wolf. The senior producer of the NFL today is Eric Mann, and the director, Bob Matina, and the coordinating producer of CBS Sports is Harold Bryant. The associate directors of today's game, Ross Schneiderman and Steve Karasik, our broadcast associates, Ryan Galvin and John Paquette, our technical manager, Pete Kalander, our technical director, Scott Sickler, our audio supervisor, Phil Adler. Our production manager is Rainey McHenry. And all season long up here in the booth, our spotter, Mike Gluck, and our statistician, Ethan Cooperson. Jobs well done all season long, along with, of course, uh, the best crew around. There's Bill Belichick, had his two sons. They come into our meeting yesterday. <laughs> Not all dressed up. Dressed up and was 